Um, we were talking about there's an analogy of the lotus that flourishes in uh, muddy water. Um, I said filth. <laughs> filth. How do we allow um, the lotus that exists in we each one of us to flourish in filth? Um, and even though in this in this age of whatever we call it Kali Yogan, there's so much of um, volatility. Um, how does the human mind create a focus and consistency in thought that uh, enables it to isolate itself from filth, so to speak, and let the the mind develop and flourish as a lotus? You haven't been listening to me. Is audio working? <laughs> Did I talk about isolating yourself from filth? If you isolate yourself, you will die because of lack of nourishment. If you're a plant, what people think is filth is your food, isn't it so? Hello? If you are a plant, if you are a tree, what other people think is filth? Isn't it your food? So, lotus thrives on it. What is filth is only in the human mind, isn't it? Huh? This happened very wonderfully. I was teaching a program in a village in Tamil Nadu, way back, maybe twenty-seven, twenty-six, twenty-seven years ago, in a small village called Velaidupalyam. <laughs> I enjoyed those cute villages teaching very simple people, but they are the people who stood like pillars for the foundation to grow. <clears throat> so I was teaching them at that time Shunya program and I'm talking about how when you meditate, when you go beyond a certain level of relaxation, if you don't come out and become active, once again, the blood will try to push back the impurities into the cellular level. This is like you gave so much filth to the municipality in the last one year and you did not pay your taxes. So the municipality decides ten loads of filth, they will put it in your house today and go because that's what has come from your house. So if they do like this, what will you do? In one voice they said, why look for to grow? <laughs> that means they said, we will use it in the paddy fields. <laughs> I, I just phew, got stuck for a moment. <laughs> this is an example which is working wonderfully well in the city when I'm speaking in English language <laughs> and I'm talking to people. If you put back all the filth into your house, will you take it? No, 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 we don't want the filth. But these village people who are all farmers, they said, why look for to grow? <laughs> so, <laughs> what is filth for you is very precious for many other creatures, particularly the plant life, isn't it? So, there is sufficient filth around you and within you. Yes. And how to transform this into a fragrant blossom? That's a question, not how to isolate yourself. Because you never can isolate yourself. Because what is on your mind is not your choice. Whatever you have seen, everything that you're exposed to is on your mind, isn't it? Now, what will you make out of it is your choice. Will you smear this filth on your face and walk around in the world? or will you make this lotus blossom? That's all the choice you have. Filth or no filth, you have no choice. Believe me, even if you go and sit in a Himalayan cave, dirt, dirty thoughts can come to you. You think they'll go away? You already tested them. <laughs> they'll not go away. But if you learn to transform all this into another possibility, then it doesn't matter what comes your way will not determine where you go. 
right now for most people, what comes their way determines where they go in their life. That is why they're so paranoid and scared of their life. But if you know how to transform filth into wealth, it's an important part of the document, transforming filth into wealth <laughs> on a different scale. But I'm saying within yourself, if you know how to transform filth into wealth, what comes at you doesn't matter, whatever comes at you, the worst things that come at you, if you know how to make the best out of it, then why do you distinguish something is filth? This is why Shiva is described in many ways. At one moment he is a Sundar Murti, the most beautiful human being. In another moment he is hideous. He is in the most ugly forms, in the most filthy forms. Why this is shown like, like this is, to make you understand, life has all these aspects. What will you make out of it? That's all the big question is. And that's the only thing this culture has always worshipped. Otherwise, your Ramas, your Krishnas, even Shiva himself, if you look at the worldly life of theirs, it's a big failure, isn't it? Rama is a serial disaster. Yes, even the property is taken. <laughs> Continuous disaster. Any one of those incidents happened in your life, you would be broken. Huh? Your wife kidnapped and your children taken away from you, then you fight a battle with your children, your kingdom gone. All these things will break human beings, isn't it? But whatever happened, he stayed above it. So we are not worship, worshipping him for his success. We are worshipping him because it doesn't matter what you throw at him, he still goes through it untouched. <clears throat> All their lives, if you look at it, if you look at the events of their life, it is one big failure. Krishna worked his, all his life to avoid that war. All he ended up in was in the terrible war and he has to give his teaching there in that war. But he remains untouched. So this is becoming a lotus, this is making filth into a great wealth within yourself. You don't have… do you have a Duryodhana in your neighborhood? No, Dushyasana? No. So that kind of ugly drama is not happening in your life, isn't it? Yes or no? The kind of ugly drama that happened in Draupadi's life is not happening in your life, nowhere near that, isn't it? Huh? Nowhere near that. Yes, it's happening to you. <laughs> She's… <laughs> no, no, nowhere near that. You don't know what happened to her. It's another matter. So whatever drama is happening, if you understand one fundamental thing, if you don't forget one fundamental fact that you are here just for a brief amount of time, you came with nothing, you go with nothing, this is not philosophy, this is a fact of life. Don't think, yes, yes, what is there, we all go. Don't make a philosophy out of it, it's a fact that you will go, isn't it? Hello? Yes. Is it philosophy that you will die? Or is it a fact that you will die? It's a fact that you will die, isn't it? And it's a fact that you were born with nothing. It's a fact that you will die with nothing. So in between drama, whatever the hell happens, whatever the hell, all right, happens, you can make heaven out of it within yourself. Because just look at the joke of it. Of people who come with nothing, for every… if they lose a safety pin, they will cry <laughs> because they can't poke anybody anymore. <laughs> Tell me what are they not crying about? Just about everything, isn't it? So will you get this point on your deathbed or today? That's all the choice you have. You'll anyway get it one day, believe me. But will you get it before it's too late or will you get it in time 
so that here there can be a blossomed human being or a constipated human being. This is all the choice. This is all the choice, there is no other choice. No, but Sadhguru, you know what happened? I will tell you what happens at the very end. <laughs>